end of July 2021. I can't believe I'm saying this. I feel as though the summer has only just begun. Oh, and that rhyme. <laughs> really good to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate your time. We are on the east side of my patio. I'm gonna try and do this efficiently, but I don't really want to be rushing it. So I'm going to put timestamps into the description regarding which area we are actually looking at. And if you wanna skip ahead, please feel free to do so. I just feel like sometimes things shouldn't be rushed, especially this time of year when there's a lot going on, especially up here on my top shelf. The catasetinae are just taking off now and I have started showering them because of all the happy sap on the leaves. My gorgeous, gorgeous Poilostylus ciliaris variety or steady eye is in full bloom and I have not put them into my blooming alley because honestly, there would be no space at the moment to be able to enjoy this without freaking out and being scared of other things that are going on there. Appreciate you being here. I hope that some of these things will catch your eye. If you are looking to do videos and care collabs, feel free to leave me a comment below if you have any of the orchids that you see in the collection today. I won't be naming them all, but if you recognize something, let me know. Well, that's Ancelia Africana. The three growths are coming along nicely, a little bit better than they did last year, which is good. They've already got double the size of what last year's growth were. I'm trying to do some light training here. <laughs> Clearly, there's always got to be one again that's going in the wrong direction. All right, very, very gently and slowly, let's take you down a level on the shelf to where I have very many top guns, as I call them because they're very big orchids, highlight orchids, and they enjoy all that good stuff. What's poking out in the background there is my Catlianthe Zagarik Wax African Beauty. Eight buds. I didn't expect any blooms at all this year because of the massive cleanup and the division of 2020. Last year I had nine buds. And you can see how big the growth is. And this year on a very small growth about half the size, I've got eight. Super surprised, very, very happy. I'm gonna take it, she can handle it. And then in the front here, what I wanted to point out, my Lelia zip. For the first time, I have a sheath. Yep. Is it gonna bloom or isn't it? I hope it's going to bloom. It'll be three years taking care of her and hopefully this year it's her first time to bloom. My little favorite here of Brassavola digbiana, just roots, 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 roots. No sign of any new growths. I was tricked to believe that I saw nubbins swelling when I did the cleanup earlier this year. Well, they have not moved at all. So root production it is, and that's not too shabby. I have my little Darwinara blue in the back there. I thought maybe it's too late, but you never know. So I brought it back into the east side See if I can still trigger a spike before the season is over. Eh, I think I missed the mark, but we will know for 2022. I lost one of the new growths on my Mirnoco Cattleya here, Louise Fuchs Purple. Unfortunately, all the misting that I was doing, I have 30 degrees at least average temperatures now and very dry winds, a lot of misting and I believe it took that new growth out, which is a shame. The other growth, however, is giving its second leaf a little peekaboo to the world. So at least that's doing well, and I'm glad, at least one. Unfortunately, the other growth was taken out far too soon for it to produce any roots. C'est la vie, what a shame. And then in the back here, I've got golden cellar coming along beautifully with that growth right up against the wall and a sheath that didn't bloom for me last year. Don't know why it skipped a year. Normally it was a reliable winter bloomer, but okay. Maybe that sheath this year will give us something. And I've got a beautiful cluster of four buds on my Durigan Crucero do Sul. And I hope that they will be open in time. Otherwise, <clears throat> the care collab will be, I don't know. <laughs> it was all about these buds, but look at them. Eh, 
oh well, maybe to the wire. And then back here, let me see if I can just, look at that growth coming right there on my mailman. Beautiful, hey? Am I gonna get this one to bloom? I can tell you last year and the year before I lost the buds and let's see if it being so late in growing this year, it'll keep the buds because it won't be in bud during the hottest month of the year. Fingers crossed, mailman would be nice. It's tried twice now in my collection. Let's see if we're lucky for the third go around. Here's the dendrobium, the massacre dendrobium. The cutting that I've, well, the division I left in my collection. It's growing a cakey over there, but all the growths are just doing well in the pot. Wrong side, Nina. Let's go around the other side. They're maturing fabulously, like nothing ever happened. Just great. And I thought I saw another teeny tiny one. Yeah, right there on the left. <laughs> that one's new. So yeah, a little bit of abuse and here we are, still doing okay. I got that growth again from the mailman. Awesome. I've got my little Vacoisery here, my Lelia Purparata. She's resting, giving her some shade, letting her rest. And then down here, I've got my golf green hair pig coming up with a stonking, beautiful new growth. Great, great size considering the division of last year. And here are the little berry odored divisions that we separated out. Their new growths have matured beautifully, if I might say. Look at that. Size comparison, everything fantastic. In this case, it's even a bit larger than its previous one. And this little growth right here of the second division is also beautifully matched in size to the one next to it. Yeah, very happy. Francis Fox has finished blooming, yippee I'm so tempted to go in and clean her up and get this back bit off, but I'm gonna wait because she's now starting a new growth down in there. My Lelia Perinii, right back there, up against the wall, a new growth, and it's got a beautiful sheath. The growth is not a big one, but I didn't have big ones last year either, and they bloomed. So Perinii is coming hopefully into bloom. At some point, we'll get to see the flamingo style buds. That'd be awesome. My Dinard Blue Heaven here. What a show off. <laughs> Leaf for days and the sheath. The sheath of a Dinard Blue Heaven. My word. There's nothing in there yet. It normally remains pretty flat and empty. It has to as yet develop its suitable but look at this. This is what orchid dreams are made of. Love it. And then we go over here to Pastoral Innocence, which is also giving me another beautiful growth and another sheath. And you can see the one from the year before. It did not bloom. I wonder if it will bloom this year. It's certainly looking beautiful, juicy. Love, love, love it. And what do we got in the back? That is Happy Holiday. Also, gorgeous growth. Despite the division of last year, beautiful sheath, love. And in the front here, we've got the usual candidates just doing their thing. Here's another Sunya Green. It's not the named variety, but it's not really doing anything either. So we'll have to still wait for Sunya Green blooms. My Dawiana is impressive. That's the growth of the most mature Dawiana that I have. Looking delicious. <laughs> no, I don't eat my orchids. I might lick my finger after touching their happy sap, but I don't actually. It's just so divine to see a growth doing this. I absolutely love it when they're like this. In the back, I'm just going to pan down and through. In the back there is Cattleya Iricolor, and all it has right now is root production mode full on, and it's got like two nubbins at the base, but they are not moving, so we will wait and see about that. And here is my little Dendrobium nobili, getting its high light, but not direct sun for most of the day, as it's still too hot, but it's growing okay. 
it's growing okay. Getting a lot, a lot of light. Very, very careful now with my bug treatment on this one. I don't want any growths taken out this season like it was last year. And so far, we've been successful. And then down here, I have a little bit of an array of orchids. That is Catlia Maxima Alba from the orchid room. Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker. That little growth is coming along beautifully. Look, see that? Yeah, love it. It's got great roots in the pot as well. Let Totus bicolor has finally woken up. That's one growth. Yippee, aye, aye. rejoice, one growth. Oh, I'm just wanting it to become a little bit more vigorous than it is, but I'll take one growth. Here is the Dimophorcus lowii, and check out that leaf. We have gone up another four centimeters. What? Four centimeters? That's a lot. Normally, I only get five centimeters per year, and it's already four since our care collab. Huh. That's pretty amazing. And then the Osirclades bathulifera here. Very slow in developing that growth. But let me go back here, get this one out of the way. Look at my Leonis. Here are the two of them. The one on the left was my first one. The one on the right there was the second one. And they're going nuts. Nuts, 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 especially on the roots. Check all that out. Uh, I've got a little Chantilly lace to the right of me that's stopping me from going any further. But I hope you can see lots and lots of roots happening. Very pleased. And it is absolutely going mental. The leaves are going mental. The new leaf already there in the center. That wasn't there a month ago. And then my little one here, that leaf. A month ago it was there, but <laughs> not like this. Now it's really taking off. And I've also got some new roots happening on this one. It's a little bit slower on the root front, but they are going into the lava rock nicely. I like it how this one has got obvious, obvious root growth coming. And there's a Chantilly lace pushing me away here, but yep, I'm getting roots in the pot here as well. And the new growth is the best ever. I've got at least three leaves there. So yeah, hmm, Chantilly lace. I hope we are over whatever issues it had when it came, but at least now we're getting there. My Tibicinis back there is actually growing a new growth, which is fetched up against the pot. And here are the two dendrobiums I put into lava rock. At least now I've got this one growing its new growth. About time too, because we need roots. The canes are desiccating. And here's the other one. Let me reposition myself. That's better. So here's Sutkinoi. Very, very slow to start on this new growth. And look at it now. Finally, and the roots are in the pot. Oh, and I'm so happy because I can much better take care of this orchid now. And I don't have to worry so much about the leka and all that business taking out dendrobium roots. But isn't that beautiful? I love those striations, those markings on the bracts while they're fresh. Really dressed for the occasion. <laughs> yeah, so they're doing well. And oh, by the way, let me show you. Let me show you. Again, I remind you that there are timestamps in the description. But look, my little Maitsuru. Look at this. Yep, it went straight up because I made sure that the tag stayed where it was. And now it's got a little kink in its shape there, like a kinked neck. But it's matured very beautifully. And I'm going to leave it and see if it hopefully next time pushes out a new growth over here, as I, I was hoping it would do, and then maybe leave it another year. And if it starts another growth again on this side, then we are in trouble because we have to move the orchid, disturb her, and put her into the middle of the pot. Oh well, she took to that little change of pot and setting and everything very, very well. No problem there, and I'll do it again if I have to. But yeah, that growth has matured beautifully. Very pleased. All right, that is the lower shelf of my east side. And now we will go to the deep south. 
Doesn't that little corner there look so inviting with its little umbrella? <laughs> but before we get there, can't help but pass over the little Rapiculus Lelia table. Right after I film this tour, I'm going to film an update. But they look so cute. They're doing well. I'm not having any worries with these guys at this moment. Anyway, update video to follow. Let's move a little bit slower. That weed is not growing in my Maasai Red, but look at my Maasai Red is going nuts. Look at this growth. Ah, oh, the size of it already. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad it can survive outside in my climate. There's another one. The other bulb back there has a second one. And this growth here is coming right bang smack in the middle out of the pseudobulb that's right there. It had to go on the left, which is okay, which is great because I still have more room in the pot then. Perfect. <laughs> These two are looking amazing back here. Also nicely positioned towards the back, right into the pot. That's perfect. I can see myself get away with this pot for another two years. Yay. <laughs> All right, let's go to this corner here because my little green hopper, since it's been in its orchid top, well, the roots have not necessarily extended, but I'm getting a new root in the back here. And that is what it is all about. Now, I am hoping that I can keep this root going in this setup. Green hopper, at least it's starting to show something. New leaf going on there. And I am hopeful that we might just be able to keep it in this orchid top and make it happy. Cousin It, we haven't seen Cousin It for the longest time. And no, I did not split him. I did not divide him. I, I just didn't have the heart. I am very, very happy with his progress at this point in time, how he's doing. He's not declining. There is an orchid top down at the bottom there and he's already drunk up his morning dose of the tray. <laughs> I have to fill him up again. And I spray him a lot, a lot during the day as well, because all these new growths are now opening the leaves and they are maturing beautifully. <laughs> I don't have the heart to take him apart. And as long as he looks like this, oh, I'm just gonna leave him. I don't see any kind of stress or decline. <laughs> Here is my Epidendrum Schweinfurtianum. Yeah, some new growth on the top. Marvelous, marvelous. Settling in beautifully. I can't get over how this orchid has just jumped into my life and become a massive, massive favorite. The new growth down there, let me see that I get up without moaning too much because of the pain in the knees. But let's see, there's the new growth and it is starting to leaf out which is great. This orchid is doing fine. The repot was the best thing ever. Get it in the pot quickly. Stop messing with the roots and let it settle in. I love this thing. And here is my Plectral Minthus caudatus. After all the copper treatment, I will do an update on that as well, just specifically as a part two. But I've got a little bit of a branching going on in the back here on that root right there, which is very, very precious. And I'm hoping that more of the same is going on in the pot. This looks like a very solid orchid, but the roots are more fleshy than anything else that I have in my collection from the Angrecoid tribe genus. So I'm not into yanking to see if it is pot bound. This one does not get the tug test. I have had a few little bug issues, but they are very quickly dealt with no problems there. The leaves are expanding nicely and I've just come accustomed to the spotting. I will live with that as long as the orchid is developing well. I've also had bug issues here on my Angre Combossary. You can see the damage on the leaves there. That's mealy bugs, but it hasn't stopped. It's just going to leave blemishes on the leaves for the foreseeable future. Right there, thank goodness the crown wasn't affected and the next leaf is coming out. And 
Let me see if I can get you in there and show you. Check out that new route. Woohoo! And now the pièce de résistance in this corner. And I will again include this in my copper debacle update. But look at my Crestwood Tomorrow Star go! Look at all these roots branching everywhere. Oh my goodness, I am so thrilled. Here's the one that dried out because of the copper. But look at what happened to the older roots. And I'm hoping I can show this and do it justice. Check this out. This is not from a new root. This is all the branching of an older root. Mental, going absolutely mental with root tips. So very happy, I can't explain it, I can't describe it. And you know, it was a lesson learned, really a lesson learned. But that is just, that makes me happy, happy. This was one of the cut ones. Look at that. Please, there we go, look at that. Oh, the relief, the relief. Here is Encyclia Garciana Alba very gently try not to jiggle you around too much and this is that beautiful pot the repot and it's doing much better i still had some stress because of the repot and the roots that were ripped off the mount but it is looking much much better on the growths that are coming out now i have to be very careful with bugs mealy bugs and stuff like that because it's all a little bit crowded in there so I'm quite cautious and I paint this one on a regular basis, especially in the crown, so that they never ever get a hold. And this is probably a result of me painting and not getting into the bud situation quick enough. And it's the mealybugs have taken it out. But not a problem. First of all, I want this orchid to be happy in this setup with just Akadama and Croc Lava Rock. And I think it's working. Now we just have to keep it safe from bugs. See those growths in there? No issues with concertina leaves like the growth there. I'm very hopeful. This looks very promising. Yes, I know I need to get on to Garen Weaver. I've been saying that for months now. I have a plan. And I have a story to tell, so we'll tackle that one because I won't have to concentrate as much. I hope. <laughs> but yeah, Garen Weaver will take care of him very, very soon. Here is Kimmy, just doing fabulous. And also, we've got ourselves some gorgeous root tips going again. So please, there's also one beautiful root growing in the back there. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I will never do it again, forgive me. That little branch that is now growing of its own, it's a fourth lead. There we go, it has its own little root coming out as well now. No sign of spikes. I read a comment recently from Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. She believes to have a spike on her Holcoc Blossom Kimberlianum. So I went and checked mine. I don't have any signs, but hey, as long as we get one of them to bloom, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, so, oh my goodness, yes. Let me just uh, love and leave you with my bletilla. Hmm. I think this is normal. Eventually the leaves will dry out and die back. I hope it is normal. Any experts out there? Is this too soon? She was only repotted earlier this year. She is not in a mature plant. Is this what they do? I don't see any rot. I don't see any stress. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is way too soon for the leaves to be drying out. I did say I would love and leave you, but let's go and check on some blooms. The U-turn of my patio tour wouldn't be complete if I don't show my Chao Praia and Papilionanthe totem pole. And if we have blooms, my goodness, why not enjoy them? It's like they have been around for months. And I would like them to be around for even 
more months. But my little puppy Leonante has objected and I think maybe the ants took them down. That's way too soon without having had the fourth bud open yet. Hmm. Or hot wind. That could be it as well. Very beautiful, beautiful Papilionante Teres variety under Sony Eye Blooms. I love, I love this orange and pink. So Bahamas. Hmm. Yeah, all right. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the patio. I will do an update on the blooming alley as well. Just a separate thing. There's a few things going on there. And I hope to see you in that video as well. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Thank you so much for your time. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.